Hey guys, Nathan, Duck River Honey. I wanted to do a follow-up on a video I recently did where I was equalizing. I swapped positions of hives to trade foragers out and then I checkerboarded one hive. Um, you know, this is for swarm prevention. It's to boost weaker colonies so that they can get strong enough to split or to make a honey crop. And I just wanted to follow up and show you guys what happened. So this colony was weak. Uh, they've got a queen I don't like. She had a high mite load last fall. I'm going to requeen this colony, but they weren't strong enough to do much with. So I wanted to boost them and I had another colony that had too many bees in it. They were gonna try to swarm. So I boosted this hive with one or two brood frames. Uh, from other big colonies and then I changed positions uh, with another colony that had a large field force so all the field force in that other colony came back to here uh, moved them to the other spot they lost their field force which weakened them down some and then these girls picked it up they I looked peeked in them last week and they were strong enough I put a third box on them they were just in two it looks like I've got a cluster of bees over here this was a box of partial, partially drawn frames. I'm out of completely drawn frames. Let's take a look here and see what we're doing. You can see this hive is just absolutely packed side to side with bees. And we've got at least two or three brood frames here where before they didn't have much of anything. What a difference. You can look at the brood frames before I did this and the brood frames after. What was holding this queen back was bees. She didn't have enough bees to keep brood warm. She can lay all the eggs she wants to now. That's what equalizing this colony and boosting them with foragers has done. Just a massive amount of bees in here. All right, so this hive is, uh, I don't know, it's about 10 times the strength that it was two or three weeks ago. Um, it's it's going to be strong enough for me to split it up. I, I went through here and looked for the queen. I didn't find her. There's so many bees in there. I could shake all the bees down and um, isolate the queen, figure out where she's at and, and all this. But um, I think I'll just split this hive up dirty uh, without finding the queen. Just break it up into nukes and drop queen cells. She'll be in one of those boxes. You know, I, I don't know which one, but she'll be in one of them. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go take a look at the hive that I swapped with this one. A lot of bees.
Queen cups, no queen cells, that's good. Got several frames of brood up in here. More in this box. I'm gonna have to pull a split out of them to keep them from swarming. Yeah, but I'd say they're on track. I've got no queen cells, and that was sort of the goal with them. Yeah, they're right on track. I'll be able to pull one or maybe two splits out of them. And, ooh, have I got a queen seal here? Nope, just a cup. A cup with nothing in it. That's great. I'd say on those two hives, that uh, these maneuvers worked out pretty well. Both of them are big enough to split. Neither one of them is trying to swarm. Can't ask for a whole lot more than that at this point in the season. So this hive was honey bound meaning they had a solid box of honey here on top. They had some brood in two, some brood in one, uh, nothing in three, and then I, what I did is I added a box of drawn combs and alternated the uh, honey frames and drawn comb in sort of a zigzag pattern. So I, if I started on the wall here with a honey frame, I'd start on the wall here with a uh, drawn but empty frame and then alternate. The point of that is to give the queen a path to move up and to give the bees a path to move honey around and establish the bird nest higher in the hive. Bees early in the season, if they are honey bound, they will almost assuredly swarm. So I wanted to address that problem. They still got a lot of feed in there. So if all this maneuver worked, I would expect there to be some open space here in this box that the bees have cleared out and then the queen has started laying in it. That was a honey frame. They have uncapped almost all of it. And are hydrating it so that they can eat it. That's what we want. Again, nectar storage. And brood. So they have indeed moved up. That's what we want. We got one frame or more. Good looking pattern there. I like this queen a lot. Guys, I'd say that uh, I think I would claim success on all three of these. I think they're all about where I want them to be. I'm not going to pull a split out of this one. I didn't expect to. They just didn't have the population. But those other two, I'll split down. But they don't have swarm cells. Um, you know, that's a win. I took a small colony that didn't look that good. I'm going to get goodness three or four splits out of it I'll, I'll split it down hard and uh, the other colony I'll pull one or two out of it they are not swarming on me this colony's got room to grow uh, I really like this queen I like that she's not getting too big too quick and I'm having to split her uh, having some early bees this year is not a bad thing because I, I need to grow my numbers but um, eventually, if I'm just doing honey production, I like having hives that are a little bit slower and more in tune with 
how our nectar production is. I think I've got several highs with Italian genetics that want to build up early in the season. And um, you know that's great for making early splits, which is useful this year. But over time, I, I believe I'll weed that out and try to have more hives like this one. Guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.